How to become a billionaire in real estate. That sounds like a pipe dream to most, but what most don't realize is that the very first practices of many real estate billionaires are doable for most individual investors, even if you're short on capital and credit. And I'll show you what I mean. You ready? Let's go. All right, by the time we're done, you're gonna know the three most common ways real estate billionaires got their humble starts and where you can begin in case you want to walk in those billionaire footsteps. Now, this was of interest to me because I just started watching the show Undercover Billionaire this past week, the one that featured Grant Cardone. And this is where he was dropped off in an unfamiliar city with nothing but a hundred bucks to his name. And his challenge was to build a million dollar business in 90 days. And there are two other billionaires featured on the show that are tasked with the same challenge. There's Elaine Collati, a real estate developer in Los Angeles, and Monique Mosley, an entertainment entrepreneur. And during their show introductions, Monique said that most wealthy people inherit their wealth. And that stuck with me because I had actually heard the opposite all my years growing up. So I went to go check it out. I went, did my own fact check. And I found a 2019 study by wealthx.com that revealed just 13.3% of billionaires inherited their total wealth. While a surprising 55.8% of the 2,604 worldwide billionaires were self-made. And it might not come as a surprise, but nearly 90% of ultra high net worth individuals got and maintain their wealth by investing in real estate. Now granted, some high net worth individuals are more invested in real estate than others, but it turns out that real estate remains the most popular vehicle for wealth creation and preservation. For us mere mortals though, the question is, what lessons can we learn from how billionaires invest in real estate? Well, surprisingly, quite a bit. Sure, you might not be able to start with a multi-million dollar mansion or a private island, but if you can think like a billionaire and follow in their footsteps, more than half the battle has been won. And you will probably find it encouraging that many of those billionaires started out without the capital to self-fund real estate purchases or the credit history to easily finance them. And coincidentally, that's something that I'm gonna be doing this month with a small group of aspiring investors, helping them get their first deal with minimal capital or credit. And they're all going to do it in 10 days or less, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to join us, get the details at thelegendschallenge.com. So the very first practices of many real estate billionaires are doable for most individual investors. I mean, if you run a business, own your own residence, or even have a tenant already, you're miles ahead of most Americans. So let's go over the three ways that real estate billionaires got started in real estate and then highlight how you can too. So the first one is office buildings. You know, while many real estate billionaires got rich in residential real estate, which I'll cover later, plenty of them used office space to get rich. Donald Bren with a net worth of 16.2 billion. Edward Roski, 6.1 billion, John Sobrato, 6.1 billion, and Ted Lerner, 4.7 billion, all owe at least part of their fortune to office buildings. Now, of course, there is a greater barrier to entry in buying office buildings than residential housing, but the management is easier and growth potential is much higher. And once you get a few office buildings going and have a reliable rent roll, it's easier to keep investing in new properties. The growth becomes much, much easier. Now the clearest path to success here is if you're already a business owner, because it makes sense for most business owners to own their buildings and then segment the office space out and start renting out portions of it. Because every dollar that you're paid in rent is a dollar that you don't have to take away from your business. And if you have a business that makes enough to support the rent payments, you can leverage that cash flow to buy more office properties. Now number two, fixer uppers. Sam Zell managed 4,000 apartments when he graduated from college. And out of those 4,000, he owned at least 100 of them. And he and a friend, they started out by just managing the students' apartments, but quickly learned the trade and started buying rundown houses to fix up and rent to students themselves. Now, this was back in the 60s. Nowadays, if you hear the word fixer upper, you're probably thinking of house flipping. Now, house flipping is notoriously fickle and not many real estate billionaires did it for long or even at all. Fixing up houses to rent to students, however, works out much better. You could even potentially rent out part of a property while working on a different unit. 
After the house is fixed up and you have a rent history on it, it will likely be worth more, even in a down market, because of the ability to appraise using the income approach, of which will give you the ability to refinance money out to buy your next property. Now, personally, if I'm going to flip a property, I prefer to do it without the fixing part. I mean, it's easier, it's faster, and of less risk. And that's exactly what I and a small group of aspiring investors will be getting together to do this month. I'll be working side by side with them, and each of us will get a deal done in 10 days or less. And if you'd like to join us and get one done yourself, you can get the details at thelegendschallenge.com. We'd love to have you. Now, number three, affordable housing. Stephen Ross has a net worth of around $8.3 billion. He founded Related Companies, which has invested in over $600 billion worth of real estate over the past 50 years. And Ross is also a majority owner of the NFL's Miami Dolphins. And Ross started in real estate investing with affordable housing in 1972. And he mastered the art of developing and leasing housing that was subsidized by the government. By the 1980s, he owned multiple high-rise towers in several cities and had diversified into mortgage financing and property management. Affordable housing, it's often the first foray real estate investors make into the market. Government tax credits are available to properties that lease a percentage of their holdings to people with low income, seniors or, or people with disabilities, students, military members, and rehab or reentry program participants. While Ross took advantage of the tax credits by setting aside a percent of each property for affordable housing, smaller individual investors can start in affordable housing with programs like Section 8 housing. The Section 8 housing program pays about 70% of the rent for tenants in the program, and that amount is directly deposited into your bank account each month on time. The catch is that you'll have to follow the government guidelines to a T. You'll also have to pass an inspection before the unit can be rented. Nothing big, but it is something extra to do. So how to get started? Well, for these real estate billionaires, the type of real estate investing wasn't as important as getting started doing it well, and compounding profits with new investments. And each of them had some level of expertise in their chosen area that gave them an edge. You know, for Stephen Ross, it was tax credits. For Sam Zell, it was fixing up houses. So figure out where your own circle of competence is, and then start there. And if you need some help figuring, the Legends Challenge might make sense for you. I put a link in the description below for you if you want to take a look at how it works. So to really play the billionaire real estate game, I've learned these four lessons from one personally. Lesson one, focus on off-market deals. They don't play much in the retail marketplace where competition drives up the prices. Lesson two, use other people's money, even when you have your own. Despite how much the billionaire makes, they always opt for using someone else's money to buy their real estate. And in our REI ACE program, we do the same. We give our private clients access to our lending network, where 100% financing is available for many types of deals. Now, lesson three, maximize the tax breaks. You know, one of the many advantages of investing in real estate is that the federal government will give owners credit on their mortgages, property expenses, property taxes, and the depreciation of the property. And the first step to maximizing the tax breaks is to set up the right business structure. And if you're ready to do that, I've partnered with an expert that can answer all of your questions, give you some suggestions, and even set up your business structure for you if you want, for free even. I mean, you'll just have to pay the, the state filing fees and a small admin fee, and then you can consider it done. Go to freeentity.com for the details, and I'll go ahead and I'll put a link below in the description for that too. Now, lesson four, preserve your wealth. You know, real estate has proven to be the best wealth creator during the best of times, and the best wealth preserver during the worst of times. Given these facts, billionaires use their real estate holdings to help secure their wealth and to make sure it can be passed on for generations to come. And if you'd like some help getting your real estate investing going and going fast, take a look at what we're doing this month at thelegendschallenge.com. You'll see the link below too. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.